This is the new Nothing Phone 2A Plus, plus for improved camera, performance, and design, all for £399. But what do you get for your money? Let's talk about it. Starting with the design on the front, we have a 6.7 inch Full HD Plus AMOLED display. They call it Flexible Full HD Plus 6.7 inch AMOLED display. We have a front facing camera there, which is a 50 megapixel front facing camera. We have this nice curved edges, which makes it nice and easy and comfortable to hold in hand, uh, especially if you're gonna be using it for a prolonged period of time and the size of the phone as well. On the right side, we have our power button, which is nice and clicky. And then on the left side, we have a volume rocker again, nice and clicky as well for controlling your volume whenever you need to. On the bottom, we have our SIM card tray there, USB-C uh, ports and speaker grill uh, right next to it as well. On the back though is where the magic happens in terms of the design. And this is something we've become accustomed to when it comes to nothing phones, uh, nothing devices in general. So we have that eye looking thing on the back for the camera array. Again, two, two cameras there. We have 50 megapixel main and 50 megapixel ultra wide. You can see the NFC coil just housing the camera there as well. And then you got the glyph interface just around it, three lights, uh, light strips on there. And then you can see the rest of the inner workings of the device as well. It's also available in black and this gray metallic finishing device uh, as well, which looks really nice. I prefer this color actually, it's just nice and soft. I love the gray sort of look to it as well. It's pretty cool. On the device itself, we can have a look at some of the features that you can expect uh, on the device. So if we scroll across and scroll around, you can see all the apps that's available. But one thing that's cool right off the bat is the widgets that's available on this. They have this new news reader widget, which you can also tap it and it starts reading out uh, wherever the latest uh, news is. You can also change the settings for that. So if we go to widget settings, you can select the kind of news that you want from the news reporter. So you have entertainment that I've selected so far, sports and technology, but whatever tickles you fancy, you can select those and you can get updates on those whenever you need to. If we go all the way back out and we go up top here, we can see the glyphs interface settings there. You can turn it on or off if you need to do so, if you wish to do so. Uh, you can scroll across as well to see some more options like glyph uh, timer, which looks pretty cool when you start using it. And then we go into settings here. We get loads of options here. So we go through some of them. So for example, if you go to glyph interface, this is where you can change all the settings. Uh, for example, there you can see uh, how bright you can have it there. So you can have it really bright. You have different ringtones available. So when you go to your ringtone settings, you can change uh, all this across. So when you go across, you can hear it in the microphone right now. So when you change it across, the light will change on the back as well, depending on which one you've chosen. And then we've got flip to glyph, glyph timer, composer, so you can make your own. Volume indicator, so when you use the volume, you can also change the light on the back as well. You got glyph uh, progress, and then you got music visual visualization if you're listening to music, bedtime schedule. So go through that and you can change whichever settings you wish to do so. And then you got your battery here. So this has a 5,000 milliamp hour battery, which should offer you around eight hours of gaming straight if you want to game on this. You got 50 watts of fast wired charging and five watts of reverse wire charging is available uh, as well on this. So scrolling down on the battery, you can see your battery percentage, battery health, and all that kind of stuff. We come back out, we go to storage. So with this one, it is a 256 gigabyte, gigabyte of uh, internal storage. It's got 12 gigabytes of RAM plus extra uh, boost as well if you want to boost the RAM by eight gigabytes of worth of boost, taking some of the storage available on internal storage to help you, you know, get a bit more out of it. I'll show you that in the settings uh, shortly as well. Sound, sound and vibration, again, change all the settings for, uh, for glyph uh, is there and some other settings for alarm and so on. And enhanced audio, you've got enabled direct audio for external audio devices. So if you plug in your external devices, you get slightly different set of kind of audio uh, to audio signature uh, basically. We go to display and then we scroll down to display. We can see our refresh rate. So here we have dynamic, high and standard. So we can go all the way up to 120 hertz refresh and it also has a 240 hertz touch sampling rate, which I think is pretty decent for a phone that costs just over 300 pounds. It also has 2160 hertz PW. PWM uh, dimming, which is pretty cool. Uses a bit of AI and all that stuff for that as well. And then you got HDR display if you want to do that. Uh, colors, you can change that as well. You can have standard or you can make it a bit more vibrant so it pops just a bit more. And then we come out display settings. Uh, we scroll all the way down to customization. That's where you can customize things like your wallpaper, the icon pack, and all that kind of stuff. But if we go into our system here, we can also update the RAM booster. So this is what I was talking about. So we've got option for two gigabytes boost, four gigabytes boost, and eight gigabyte boost, or you can turn it off completely 
and you stick to that 12 gigabytes that's already there by default. And then we've got things like your game mode as well. Game mode is pretty cool. So you have the game sidebar, you have more to touch, sorry, miss touch prevention, notification display is minimal. And then you have game dashboard there, which you can turn it on, you can use it. Uh, you can have it as a floating icon or you can turn it off completely if you don't want it in your gaming uh, interface or experience at all. Elsewhere, this is running on MediaTek 7350 Pro 5G processor. It's a four nanometer TMSMC, uh, TSMC processor. It's Gen 2 technology in there as well. It's got eight cores running up to three gigahertz and nearly 10% higher than the predecessor well than the phone 2a and for graphics we have arm Mali g610 mc4 graphics unit which is running up to 1.3 gigahertz and it's 30 percent faster than the nothing phone 2a according to nothing phone when gaming it has hyper engine 5.0 technology this assures that you have stable gaming frame rates as well as making sure you're not burning your battery and still giving you good level of gaming experience so that's pretty cool more on the camera so the main camera is a 50 megapixel samsung gn9 f 1.88 aperture camera uh, it has 84.5 field, field of view, you have OIS and EIS as well. You can do 10 times digital zoom. And then you have your ultra wide angle camera, which is also 50 megapixel. It's a Samsung JN1 F2.2, and it will give you 114 degrees field of view. On the front camera, we have a 50 megapixel as well. It's a Samsung JN F2.2, so same as the ultra wide on the back and it gives you 81.2 degrees field of view. In the camera interface, we can see more of what you can do here. So we have uh, slow-mo, we have video, we have photo and portrait mode as well. If you go into more, then you have things like your expert mode, which allows you to adjust things manually if you wish to do so. Uh, in portrait mode, you can use one or two times. One is 24 mil, two is 50 mil. You can adjust the aperture as well. So there's strength or the intensity of the bokeh. So if you go to camera, you can shoot your video across the the range, so 14 mil, uh, 24 mil, and also 50 mil, or you can go a bit further, that's a bit more digitalized. You got 4K 30 available, or 1080p, and in 1080p, you can go up to 60 frames uh, per second. Slow-mo recording is 1080p at up to 120 uh, frames, which is cool. It means you can get those nice, cool, so, you know, slow motion videos if you wanna get a bit artsy. All the cameras are capable of recording 4K videos, including the front-facing camera as well. So if you go to video front-facing camera, you can do 4K at up to 30 frames or 1080p at up to 60 frames per second as well. So how's the camera performance and the battery life as well? First of all, the battery life is really good. It will last you a whole day and then some, which is impressive for the price point. The display is impressive as well, like how vibrant it is. It's very bright as well, which is really good. We're talking around 1,300 nits of peak brightness on here. So again, you got always on display, you got all that quirky features like the glyph interface on there as well. In terms of the camera, the photos, the photos came out really good as well. In terms of when you have really good lighting, the photos are good. Portrait mode needs some work because it still struggles a little bit with the edge, uh, edge detection, but it's still good enough for you to be able to share it on, on social media if you want to share it online or send it to your friends and family. One thing I love though is the camera in terms of the video. It looks really good, especially when you have good lighting. It's very sharp. It, it, it's good with switching focus as well from the foreground and the background, and it's very detailed and sharp, which I really like, including really minute tree in a big space is able to figure that out and make sure that the focus remains on that tiny stem so that nothing goes out of focus, which is really good. It does struggle a little bit with flare. So when you have the sunlight pointing at the lens, you will get that flare that pops out. It, it Sometimes it's very intense that it actually makes your photo look a bit weird uh, or video look a bit weird. So you might have to uh, bear that in mind as well. But other than that though, for 399 pounds, I think you are getting a bargain here. A really good phone, good battery life, good storage is there as well. You get good support from nothing. And also just generally good battery life, I said already, good camera. So those are the things that are very important. And that's the things, those are the things that I spoke about. When it comes to gaming, you can game on here with no issues at all. And I spoke about this being an improved uh, device with better camera, better performance, and the design is a bit, tweaked as well, just just improved a little bit in terms of the material. The speakers on the Nothing Phone 2A Plus is also pretty good in terms of the stereo speaker setup. So when you're listening to music or you're playing games on a louder speaker, it sounds absolutely fantastic. If there's any negative point about the Nothing Phone 2A Plus is the fact that it does get hot when you're gaming. So after gaming for a while, you start to feel the phone get warm. So as you can see, if you were to measure it at the top there, we're looking at 40 degrees. That's how hot it is over there. And then if you go to the bottom of the device, we're looking at around 37 degrees or so. So you can see that it does get hot there when it's under pressure a little bit. So that's something to bear in mind. But besides that, performance is good. You can game on this all day long and you know do all that kind of stuff that you normally do with your smartphone. That's pretty much everything. But if you have any questions though, drop them in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer your questions and uh, let me know what you think of the phone in the comments below as well. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.